Texas A&M, you are up next for my 2024 SEC football record predictions. Just a few more teams to go here before I am all finished with my SEC teams predictions for the upcoming season. If you've not watched any of my other predictions uh, for any of the other teams, what I'm going to be doing is when College Football 25 comes out in now 11, 10 days, um, I'm going to do a full season simulation and see how like the records and the results of College Football 25, how the records of the SEC teams match up with mine. And then at the end of the real-life college football season, I'm going to go back and compare how College Football 25, you know, how well they predicted and how well I predicted, and just see how things match up, man. It's a long-term idea. Um, but, yeah, Texas A&M in this one, man, they are an interesting team. Um, you know, there's, I just don't know about them, bro. I really do not know how this team is going to be. You know, they could be 5 and 7, 6 and 6 or they could be 9 and 3, you know, that 10 and 2, like I have no idea, bro. You know, new head coach Mike Elko, under him they're going to be much better though. Brighter future for sure. Jimbo Fisher just wasn't it, man. Um Connor Wigman at quarterback, I think can be really good if he can stay healthy. Uh, I think he could be a top six, seven quarterback in the SEC easily if he stays healthy. Um, yeah, I just think he's a really good player. And if he does stay healthy, that's going to be like the one position that I'm confident in when it comes to A&M is quarterback. Um, now, defensively, I think A&M is going to be pretty solid. Um, I think they're going to be okay defensively. Offensively is where my questions are. I just, I really don't know, man. I really have no idea. Um, and, I mean, their schedule is not terrible. It's not bad. You know, out of the SEC teams, they have three ranked ones. Texas, LSU, Missouri. Um, and they get two of them games at home. Or all three of the games at home. My bad. Damn. All right. Uh, yeah, this is a very favorable schedule, man. Very, very favorable. They start off with a tough one, though. Notre Dame coming to Kyle Field. Um, I, this is going to be a really good one, man. Really good one. Aggies, Aggie fans are going to be excited. New head coach, new staff, you know, fresh start for the team. Um, I think it's going to be a really rowdy place, man. Notre Dame's going to have a hard time winning. And they're also going to have new head coach Mike Denbrock, came from LSU, Riley Leonard at quarterback, transfer quarterback from Duke, dual threat man, uh, dual threat player. Um, I mean, how good are Notre Dame's receiver is going to be is my question. Um, because they haven't really had a standout receiver as far as I know. Like, to me, nobody's really stood out. Um, especially last year. So, how is that position going to look? The defense is going to be fine. The DBs are going to be elite for Notre Dame. Um, and to be quite honest with you, I really just don't like Notre Dame. <laughs> because, you know, just our head coach, Brian Kelly, LSU, uh, that's my team. You know, how, how they're just, how they act towards Brian Kelly, man, it just drives me insane. Um, like, it's been three years or something like that, like, and it's still on your mind? Like, damn. Um, but yeah, I just don't like Notre Dame, man. Uh, however, I think they are gonna get a close win. I think they're gonna get a close win in Kyle Field, and it's gonna be because of their defense. Um, again, I, I think it's gonna be a defensive battle. I think it's gonna be rather low scoring. I wouldn't be surprised if it's like 17-14, 21-17. Something along the lines of that, 21-20, you know? Like, I expect it to be in that range. I don't expect it to be a shootout. I don't expect it to be a blowout of any sort. Um, but yeah, I do have Notre Dame getting a very close win. Um, and maybe, like, a pick six is the, uh, is the deciding factor in that game for either team, really. Uh, McNeese, they're gonna get a win. Uh, at Florida, the tough one. Um, and 
I have Florida getting a win here. Uh, I picked that in my Florida prediction video. So, I have A&M starting off rough. Uh, one and two in their first three games, and they get Bowling Green. That's going to put them at two and two. And then Arkansas is up next for the Aggies, and I have A&M getting a win there. Their first SEC win, that is ugly as shit. Um, but yeah, they're getting their first SEC win. That's still ugly, but oh well. And, uh, yeah, that's a little bit of momentum. Two straight wins going into the Missouri game at home. Uh, noon game. Missouri is also a bit of a question mark for me. Um, their defense is a question mark. I think their offense is going to be pretty good. But I think their defense <clears throat> is... I don't know, man. I really don't know. Um... I really don't know. And that's that's why these predictions are so hard. You know, they lost their defensive coordinator, Blake Baker, to LSU. Lost Kevin Peoples, their edge coach, to LSU. Lost some key players on the defensive side of the ball. Um, you know, it was a very aggressive defense last year. Uh, very blitz-heavy, thanks to ba Blake Baker. Um... Yeah, how are they gonna look now, man? I don't, I, I just don't know, man. But, um, I do have Missouri getting the win here. Uh, I would not be surprised if A and M gets an upset here. Um, you know, if A and M's defense by this point has things really figured out and they're all playing together and they can slow down Missouri's offense, um, and can score some points of their own against a what I think will be rather weak. Not bad, but like below average Missouri defense. That's kind of where I'm sitting with them right now. If you can put up a lot of, you know, some points, a good amount of points on that defense, I think A&M will be in good shape. But I'm going to go with Missouri to pull out a close one. Um, And then we got at Mississippi State. And I have A&M getting the win. So... A bit interesting here. Um, I have <clears throat> A&M losing at home, um, losing at home, and then getting away on the road. I have them doing pretty well on the road. That's a neutral site game, kind of as a road game. Um, I'm gonna win at Mississippi State, which you know, with the cowbells, it's not easy to win there. Um, then they have them going against my LSU Tigers, in which I have A&M getting a win here, because LSU, they have a really hard time winning at Kyle Field. Um, it just seems like the home team wins the game every year. Um, <laughs> I think it's going to be a battle. Uh, I mean, LSU was number five in the country uh, two years ago. And, you know, was, you know, coming off, you know, they beat Alabama, sitting at number five, on the verge of getting in the playoff with two losses. And then, yeah, we had to go to Kyle Field against a five and, or, uh, was it a four and seven A&M team? And shit to bed. <laughs> it's, I don't know what it is about playing there, but LSU just cannot do it. They cannot play well at Kyle Field. And, yeah, I mean, on LSU schedule, this is, like, the one game I'm kind of chalking up. It's like, yeah, we're not going to have a very good chance in this one. Um, but, you know, if the boys can go in there and pull it out, I would be obviously very happy. But I am going to have A&M getting probably about a seven, six, seven point win. <clears throat> um, at South Carolina, I have... Wow. I have Carolina getting the win. Yeah, I mean, I'm not too upset about that, really. Um, not really upset, but I'm not too against it, I guess I should say. Night game at williams Bryce. Uh, you know, pretty hard place to play. Um, I do have Carolina kind of struggling this year, but at this point in the season, uh, they're just looking for some kind of positive. Um, if my predictions are correct. So, yeah, I, 
I think it's going to be a pretty loud crowd. Um, and I think South Carolina can pull off an upset. You know, if I had to bet, my money would go on A&M. But I'm just picking a bit of an upset here, you know. So I'm going to go with Carolina. Uh, then an off week and they get New Mexico State. They're going to get the win. And then they go to Auburn. And I think Auburn is going to be pretty good. And the game's at Jordan Hare as well. Um, yeah, I think Auburn is going to be a pretty solid team. Um, I think their defense is going to be really quick, really physical. And I think, you know, the offense has to get figured out at some point with Hugh Freeze, right? It just depends on Peyton Thorne. You know, Hugh Freeze has done a good job recruiting um, for Auburn so far. And I guess we will see if any of that's going to be paying off. Um this season or if it's going to be a bit of a longer process get his quarterback in there you know we'll just have to wait and see but i think auburn is going to be a pretty solid team this year then they end the season with texas one of the games i'm looking forward to the most in this season and i got a m getting the win over texas you know i said this in my texas video like with the baseball stuff going on between the two programs, uh, the two schools, you know, Texas taking A&M's head coach and all the shady stuff that's coming out about that. You know, it's not gonna really going to have a massive impact on football and how that game turns out, but the players on the football team for A&M, they're going to look at that and they're going to be like, oh, really? You just did our boys dirty like that, all right? Like, that's how I would look at it, at least, if I was a football player for A&M. <clears throat> that's how I would look at it. I would use that as motivation 100%. Um, but yeah, I do I do feel pretty good about picking uh, Texas A&M in this one. Kyle Field is going to be electric in this one, man. But yeah, so I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have A&M going 7 and 5 in my predictions. Honestly, I'm pretty comfortable with that. I think that's pretty good considering like I have no earthly idea if that makes sense how this team is going to perform bro like i said i think the defense is going to be decent i think it's going to be kind of what carries them at least at first um but yeah just a big question mark when it comes to the offense uh can wigman stay healthy <sighs> yeah just a lot of question marks man but yeah, floor for this team. The floor, let's see, who can I definitely see them losing? Texas, I can see them losing that one. Um, LSU, that'll put them at, what, 5 and 7? Um, yeah, I would say 5 and 7 is the floor for this A&M team. And the ceiling, I could see them beating Auburn, could see them beating Carolina. Could see him beating Florida. Honestly, ceiling I would say nine and three. I'll say floor five and seven, ceiling nine and three. Not a terribly high ceiling in my opinion. Which no disrespect, man, no disrespect at all. Um, to A and M fans, <clears throat> I think nine and three in Elko's first season would be good. I think eight and four would be pretty good. This is a loaded SEC, man. Um, and you know if a team like Arkansas is better than expected, if Florida is pretty good like i expect them to be pretty solid um like auburn they could be pretty solid lsu we'll see how good they are man um yeah like it, it's it's a loaded a loaded sec and you know nine and three eight and four be pretty good seven and five wouldn't be ideal but wouldn't be terrible you know it could be a lot worse so yeah seven and five is my prediction for a m uh, for this season. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. What do you agree with, disagree with, and I hope you all enjoyed. I will catch y'all in the next one. Peace.